Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today we are going to be fixing a mistake that I made so that I can still use a vase that I use quite often. This is a large square vase that I really like to hold flowers in and I got some wood stain in it here, up here, here, and here. So it's like not really pretty anymore. It's just got like streaks of brown in it and it's not something that I can get out. I've tried scratching at it, I can't get it out. It doesn't really affect its usability as a vase because I just put flowers in it, not like any food or sustenance that I'm going to eat. But it's also not really pretty anymore. So I am going to repaint it. I mean, it's never been painted to begin with, not intentionally. I did get the stain in there, but uh, I'm gonna paint it with glass paint and make it a beautiful vase that looks like kind of swirly stained glass. Um, mainly I'm trying to hide this and blend it in and this was just like a random brush stroke. So I'm gonna do that all over, just like random brush strokes of color to kind of blend it in and make it look intentional and hopefully create a beautiful piece that I still want to house my flowers in. So that's the craft today. I've got my vase that I destroyed. I've got some random brushes, like I specifically chose very random brushes because these are random brush strokes and I can't have it look too contrived. Like it's gotta look pretty willy-nilly to make this craft work and to pull it off. I've got my Vitrea, Vitrea paints, uh, red, blue, and yellow, and these are glass paints specifically for painting glass. So I will link everything you need down in the description below if you're also looking to uh, do some glass painting yourself along with some of my other glass painting videos. I hope you like this one. Let's get right into it. So first up, I wanna say that I have this awesome new crafting table that the back kind of lifts up a little bit and angle. The only thing I need to worry about right now is things sliding away from me, but I think that I can hold it. I have my vase on a piece of foil just to avoid mess on my new table that I love. And look at this, look what it does. I can now get my crafts and me in the frame at the same time, and this is like a game changer if you've been on my channel. You know I really struggle with that. So I'm very excited to have this table and use this. I'm gonna try. Wow, that might actually work. I just folded the foil over the edge of the table and it looks like it's holding it up. So that's really amazing and awesome. And I'm so excited to have everything working and set. And this is great. So I'm gonna be very careful and hopefully not send this flying all over the carpet. But we're gonna start with blue, because I want to and we're gonna open this up. I've already shaken them a little bit off screen. And I'm gonna go in, I like blue, I like blue a lot. So I'm gonna go in with a fair amount of blue. I'm gonna use the cup holders on the side to protect the open paint. And we're gonna go in and we're just gonna paint. So I'm probably, since it's clear, I'm gonna paint on the side near me because that's easiest for me. And you guys should be able to see it anyway. So just kind of crazy swipes of paint. That's kind of what I'm going for to match this like crazy swipe there. The actual stain is on the inside of the vase, but uh, yeah, I think as long as I paint the outside, it's gonna look okay. And I don't necessarily need to paint the inside. It's glass, it's clear. You're not really gonna be able to see a difference. Not close up, not like anything that's super intentional. So I think it's gonna be fine if I paint the outside. I would actually like a fair amount of paint on this craft. I know that seems a little anti-intuitive since the original brushings, there's not that many of them, but the original brushings are also brown and I really don't like that. So I'm trying to make them beautiful and different colors. So I wanna go in with a fair amount of beautiful colors like blue and red and yellow and colors that I really love. You guys know I love primary colors. I'm just making that very lovely kind of crazy brush stroke with it. I might kind of thin these out a little bit. Yeah, just kind of get the idea that the brown inside was intentional without making that the focal point of it, if that makes sense. So get a lot more of the other colors on here. Make them look kind of crazy, kind of splattered, but definitely and above all intentional. That's the main thing that we're going for here. The goal here is to get as much color on there the first time as I need or want because I don't want to be going back into the blues and the reds and the yellows. First time around, I want to get as much blue on here as I want. And I think, honestly, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to cap my blue and pull out my other colors. Red next. So this one I'm also going in with a big crazy brush. I'm saving this little brush for the yellow just to get it in and around. Yellow's a lighter color, so it's going to pick up the darker colors if I redip my brush. 
So I want to make sure that I have some more movability with my yellow brush. But I'm still just going to go in and kind of get the areas that I haven't gotten with blue. I like this red too because it's a very bright red. It always kind of reminds me of flowers or fireworks. I like it a lot. There we go. And we're going to get some yellow going. So I'm going in with the yellow. I am leaving my brushes there. Sometimes the paint gets too heavy and it starts dripping and I'll just clean it up with the brushes of the same color. And that's going to help create and keep this brush effect that I have going on with the vase right now. And that's really important for me. So kind of what I'm doing with the yellows is going in and around the blue and red. Um, also, I want to go over the spots that are brown with yellow because then it's just hopefully going to look like little bits of yellow peeking through and not like brown on the other side of the glass. It's just going to look very uh, intentional, hopefully. That's the hope. And then we'll just kind of paint these up and around in a way that looks lovely to me because it's my project and I get to do that. But this one side looks pretty good, so I'm going to move on to the next. I'm trying really hard not to fill in all of the little bits and pieces with the yellow, even though it's so tempting because it's such a cheerful color. I really like it, but uh, that's not necessarily the goal here. So I need to be careful and cognizant of that and leave a little bit of clear glass space just because that's the nature of the craft. And I think ultimately it's the correct decision for this piece. It's also really easy to go crazy on some sides and not on others because the sides that have the brown on them, it's really easy to add more yellow too. But I'm trying to make sure that I keep it relatively similar throughout the whole craft. And I'm going to be doing this backwards, looking through the glass at what I'm doing. Another perk of having a glass that's clear to work on. You can kind of see what you're doing without getting your fingers in what you've painted and trying to turn it around. There we go. And this little bit of blue is dripping down. So here's what I mean about cleaning it up. Just kind of go whoop, just like that. And the same with this yellow. We'll get a little bit of the yellow up here on the top because I did that with the blue and the red. And that's basically done. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and then pop it in the oven to get it all set and cured. Okay guys, so it is all done and it is out of the oven. And the great thing about these paints is that they are translucent and they dry basically exactly as they look when you paint them on. Based on the instructions on the paints, you're supposed to let this dry for 24 hours before you cook it, and I never do that. But let it dry for a couple hours at least, and then put it in the oven, let it warm up with the oven, bake, and then cool down with the oven, and I've never had a problem with it. Dishwasher safe on the top rack, so something like this is way too big. You're just gonna have to wash it by hand. I've never tried it on the lower rack, but I have no idea what happens, and it says upper rack only, so. For cups and bowls and things that I've done with this paint before, I've never had a problem in the dishwasher, but uh, for something like this, I'll probably just hand wash it anyway because it's a vase. But it turned out really beautiful. I'm going to change the angle so you can see it in the light and do a close-up. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you here again soon. Bye for now.